I am an agronomist, you know, and uh, I, I work as a research scientist with the Brazilian government, with the Ministry of, of Agriculture, as an uh, entomologist working with insects, especially with moths. And, uh, and so during my professional life, I travel a lot doing field, field work. During this time, I witnessed how nature was being destroyed very, very, very quickly. And uh, lots of these collecting trips, my wife, Lemira, went, came along. We got to the conclusion that uh, there is no much point to keep dead specimens in museums if we don't do something to to you know to save them to keep them alive in nature 40 years ago we decided that uh, when we retired we would buy a piece of forest to to preserve i was paying attention of of possibilities you no know, places that would be would be fit to 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 establish our 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 project of course it it was clear since the beginning that the Atlantic forest is a top priority. In the Atlantic forest, more than 90% is, is disappeared, you know, it was, it was clear. So the Atlantic forest is a top priority in, uh, not only in, in Brazil, is, is the second most threatened biome in the world after Madagascar. In a hundred years, we we cut we we nearly cut all the Atlantic forest was disappeared. So we we decided, of course, that it should be in some places in some place in the Atlantic forest that we, we would set uh, start our our project, our idea, our dream. Well, I knew Serra Bonita because I have been collecting here for many years. I, I think the first time I came here to collect was in 1989. Serra Bonita means the beautiful mountain. You know? The mountain is, was, is still with good forest. Maybe 50% is pristine forest and uh, many patches never logged, even never logged. And the rest is, most of it is uh, old, uh, old age, you know, old grown secondary forest, but Old grown, the poor peasants occupied Serra Bonita 50, 60 years ago, because in those times the lowland was occupied by cacao uh, plantations, you know, and the and the land was very expensive. But as soon as the the, the witch broom, which is the disease that uh, uh, the, you know that uh, hit the cacao in the late 80s, 1889, 1890s. So th this disease devastated the cacao in the lowlands. And what, you know, makes the, the, the value of the land down in the valley drop. If you create a reserve in your property, it cannot be reversed, it's, it's for perpetuity. That, that was a great, a, Advance because in the old times, before that, many many farmers, many owners, they wanted to preserve part or maybe sometime the whole property. But the, in Brazil, according to the land laws, if if the land is not used, it could be confiscated by the government to be distributed for 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 settle settlement for farming. So the land would be confiscated and then divided and uh, and uh, and uh, and given to 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 landless farmers, and and so many many farmers, many landowners, they sometimes they cut down the forest, not because they needed, because they cut down because they were afraid that the government would take them over, take it over. You know? So with this law, it was. A great advance. We plan, you know, to, to start from the top down because uh, by doing that, as you buy from the top down, you can 
put a fence, a gate, and uh, and uh, you know, and limit access to the area. Because if you buy half half the way up the hill, and somebody is living above you, you have to give passage. You know, uh, as this was farmland, farmers, uh, of course, they buy land to to farm to do something. You know, uh, when is a forest to log and then uh, to clear and. Uh, and plant uh, some crop or, uh, or pastures to graze cattle. So is so when we we came here and we started to buy the land, and we were not doing anything with it, and people were a bit very suspicious. They because it's it, 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 it's difficult for to them, according to their experience, their ancestral experience that somebody would buy land to do nothing. So when they asked, uh, oh, you, you know, you are buying land at, up in Serra Bonita, what, is, what, is, what are you going to do with it? I said, nothing, I am, you know, I want to, to keep the forest and, uh, and the areas which are cleared. Uh, I want, you know, to, to allow the forest to come back, you know. Mm. But that is, uh, but you are going to log later, no? No, no, I don't know, I am, mis Hmm. Uh, maybe, well, uh, yeah, I heard that, uh, you know, these mountains, they have uh, gold. Uh, are, you, are you going to mine? I said, no, no, there is no gold there. So it was, uh, it took a few years until they really, uh, uh, you know, were convinced that, uh, that uh, you know, uh, in reality we were... Bon dia. Bon dia. Bon dia. Yeah. We, we were, you know, we were buying to protect, according to them, to do nothing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> a, a project like, like ours, you know, conservation, uh, is you, you have to, to have a good relationship with the community, to use as much as possible local workers, to give jobs for local workers. and. Uh, for two reasons, because first the community would uh, feel that you know uh, that the project brings some benefit to the by creating a few jobs, and secondly because the workers they live down in the in the community they spend they spend the week up here they come Monday morning early morning and they leave uh, Friday afternoon. And so, uh, and so they are, they, they are our communicators down there because, you know, because they belong to the community, the community uh, tr would believe in what they say. And so by working up here, they, they, they would know what we are doing. Well, we started with our own savings. For example, when I retired, I took my pension fund you know, when you retire, you can get, you know, you can get your pension fund, yeah, and uh, and so we had some savings. So that is that we that was the money we had to start here. Then I sold our house. We had a big house in Brasilia, and we sold we sold it for about three hundred thousand dollars. So the we cre in two thousand one we created an an, an NGO. To do that, you know, to you know, to apply for funding and for to establish agreements with other institutions. So far, we managed to buy about you know, uh, two point five uh, seven thousand acres, one third of the mountain we already own. So, but uh, my 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 dream, my goal is to 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 preserve the whole mountain because it's still in good condition to be preserved. You know, we could buy another one third very easily because as the cacao economy collapsed, you know, then the, and, and the, most of the many most of the farms are abandoned, so the owners want to sell. So, the, so the the World Land Trust contribution is is vital for that because there are not many institutions that fund buying uh, purchase of land. You know, most of all other, like National Geographic Society and the TNC, the 
the, the Nature Conservancy, Conservation International, they finance research programs and protection projects and things like that, but on a short, maybe for a one year pro project or two years project, but but no money for to buy land is 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 very difficult to get. So so the the World Land Trust partnership with us is is is, is of course is vital because there are not all, not many other ways to you know to expand the reserve without the help with the contribution of World Land Trust.